Hey, Steve, how you getting on, mate? You ready for the marathon tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, I bet. All right, so I've gone through all your data. What I want is around a 360, 370 watts. That's going to lead to around a 412, 417 minutes per K, like a, a 645, 653 minutes per mile. In training is leading to sub three. So I'm pretty confident we're on this weekend. All the best, mate. Let me know how you get on. So how did I get those numbers that I just gave Steve and why am I so confident he can run under a sub three hour marathon? And how did those numbers that I gave him correlate to his actual marathon performance? Doing what I'm about to show you is gonna have you avoiding that dreaded post-race Strava caption, not my day to day. Using a real life evidence-backed approach to predicting your goal marathon time and subsequent pacing strategy. I'm even going to share some of my data to show you how this system highlights where I've clearly gone wrong in my own marathon build up. For this system to work you want to have done at least 10k or 6 miles worth of marathon paced effort within a long run, ideally 2 hours or more but 90 minutes would be the absolute minimum. Because Steve has been following one of my marathon training plans, I know exactly where to look to get the most valuable information. And this is why I tell you guys, you always should be writing out your training plan because it makes looking back on those workouts so much easier when you know exactly when and where to look. It's also why I've been using Train Peaks literally since 2010. It allows me to go back and have a look and go as shallow or as deep as I want to into the data from my past training. I will be running through my system inside Training Peaks, but that's not to say you can't apply it to a Garmin Connect, a Chorus Training Hub, Stride Power Center, or even Strava. It's just gonna be a little harder to highlight the exact data points that we're trying to find. So if you did wanna follow along, you can just take Training Peaks 14 day free trial and just leave it at that. Or you can use the discount code in the description if you want to use more of their features moving on into the future. All right, let's go. So the marathon workout that I'm looking at for Steve to apply the system to is where he's done a bit of a warm up. He's done 10K at marathon pace or power. We're using a stride power meter with Steve. And then he's had a five minute recovery into 15K of marathon pace work. So around nine miles. When I'm analyzing these workouts, I want to tick four boxes. Consistency of pace and power to make sure it's not dropping away at the end of the segment. Average values of pace and power are within zone three. So around 88 to 94, 95% of lactate threshold. Stability of heart rate to make sure it's not picking up right at the end of the interval. And then the average value of heart rate is top end to zone three to bottom end of zone four. And then definitely not spending more than say 15 minutes in zone four at the end of the interval. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna go up to power, I'm just gonna hide all the other metrics because I set this workout up to be power specific. So applied a bit of smoothing and we can see that that first 10K is just what we'll look at for now. Very constant and consistent, I'm happy with that. Then we've ticked that first box, is it within his zone three, around 88 to 94, 95% of his lactate threshold? That's actually what this structured workout pushed through to his watch and I can see immediately that he stayed within the top and bottom of that range. But if you weren't using structured workouts, what I'll do is I'll just hide that and what we can do is go show zones in this system and I can see he's set pretty much right in zone three. So no dramas there. I can also see that the average for that 10K section, he's actually averaged 409, which is like a 645-ish minute per mile. So, you know, well under three hour pace. So I'm happy with that. Now we need to move on to the heart rate to make sure he's not working too hard to hold this constant pace. So what we'll do is we'll just bring heart rate into the mix so we can have a look at that, get rid of these zones. And heart rate's looking pretty stable here. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, we can check zones to make sure his heart rate is only just touching into zone three, really, in this scenario. The other way we could check that if you're not using training peaks is a lot of them would have time in zones. Although it's the second 15K or nine mile effort that we're gonna get the most information because we're not training for the first half of the marathon, we're training for the last quarter. First off, let's just get rid of this heart rate information so that we can just focus on power. 
which does look to drop away a little bit, but overall I'm really happy with the consistency. And if I just showed that workout again, I can see he's well within that zone three, that 88 to 95%. He's looking very constant, but the trap here then is to say, oh yeah, that's really good. You know, a 412, which is what, around a 650 minute per mile, under three hour pace, like that's golden. But we need to make sure that we check this heart rate, that it's not skyrocketing over the last section. So applying heart rate here so that we can see it, removing that workout, you can see heart rate is looking really good. If we apply the zone so we can have a look, we've got zone one here, zone two, zone three, only just, only just right at that last moment is Steve kicking up into zone four, which after around two hours, 30 Ks almost of work, like 20, just under uh, around 18 miles of work, that's totally fine. No aid station, so he's gonna be a little more dehydrated than he otherwise would be in a race. That's looking amazing. And so based off of that, I can get these average values. We have 373 watts and we have a 412 minutes per K. So that would be around a 650 minute per mile. But I'm a scientist and you should never rely on just one data point to draw a conclusion. You want at least three of these workouts within six weeks to eight weeks of your goal marathon so the times are actually relevant. That way you can develop a range so you're not fixated on one singular time or pace. I applied this checkbox system to three more of Steve's marathon pace workouts which gave me a range of power outputs, pace outputs and finish times. I'll show you those in a sec because I also then will show you where I applied the system to show where I horribly went wrong in my own marathon training. Here is the average data from Steve's marathon effort sections within his last four marathon specific workouts. And each one of those ticked those four boxes and told me the same story. That Steve should be good for 365 to 375 watts, which on a flat course, would equate to around a 14 to 415 minutes per K, so 645 to a 653 minute per mile, and that should give him around a 257 to a 259 finish time. But what about when things don't tick those four boxes? What do you do then? Well, I'll show you some of my data and then I'll show you how Steve got on in his marathon. Here's a three times 10K workout that I did before my last marathon. You can see I was training for a hilly first half and then flat second half. This is a meaty workout and I wouldn't recommend many people try something like this. But remember, we're training for the last quarter, not the first half. So let's just look at my last 10K block to see if I was able to check off those four boxes. First off, is my pace and power constant? Yes, it looks really good. So let's just double check on heart rate to see if I'm actually in a metabolic steady state. So if we show heart rate zones, you might not be able to see this, but I'm immediately in zone four after a couple of minutes of that. Then I'm just actually starting to spasm out with my heart rate because I'm going that hard. So I know that I need to be able to dial that back in order for me to be able to execute a good and successful marathon. So what about Steve? Did he follow my advice? Did it work? Did he get that golden sub three dream? Yes, he did 258, 34. And although it wasn't absolutely the dream race as most of them never are, he got near heat stroke over the last couple of kilometers. So last mile or so dropped around a 430 minutes per case around the 715 minutes per mile lost around I reckon around 45 60 seconds over that last kind of 10 15 minutes but he had enough time in the bank that he was able to scrape under and tick it off to give your training the accountability and direction that it needs I made a one-year program where I give you full access to training peaks full access to my workout library that I've built up over the last decade full access to my training plan library and course library where I cover everything I talk about in my videos in more detail and more systematically. And you even get the chance to ask me questions directly during our live meetups. All right, all the best with your training. I'll see you on the next one.